Are you looking for a change management communication plan template? Well, in this video, I am going to be showing you exactly step by step exactly how to create one. I'll also be showing you the kinds of columns and data points that you're going to want to capture and how to populate this template going forward. Now, if you are short of time, I have made a pre-built, pre-formatted and optimized template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below. With that said, let me now walk you through building this template from scratch. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is give the document a title. That way, if you share this with any stakeholders, they know exactly what they are looking at. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click insert and shapes, and I'm gonna suggest using the rectangle. At which point I'm going to left click towards the top of A1, drag down, and I'm gonna to go to about S3. Now we can make this larger if we need to in due course. After letting go of my mouse, you'll see that all of these options appear. Now we can just customize the color of this header, if you like. Now choose colors that match your preferences or your organization's branding, but I personally like this one here. So I've selected that color. You can also put a shape effect as well to make this look a little bit different if you wanted to. At which point I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click edit text. And as the name suggests, I am going to type in change management communication plan. Now what you could do is you could put template in here as well. So as an example, you could do this and you could then save this on your local drive or upload it to an internet site and that way you can kind of leverage this going forward for every change management communication plan you may need across your projects. So I've just entered that text and I, on the home ribbon, increase the font size to about 20. We're gonna leave this as white text for now. If I click off, you'll notice this looks great. I'm just gonna left click and drag this right into the corner and I'm actually gonna put it on the kind of grid lines just so it you know looks even there. But once we remove the grid lines at the end, that won't actually matter. So. What I'd recommend that you do now, at which point, because this is gonna be a template that you're gonna leverage across different projects. You want to create a content area to document the project name. You also want to provide a date where the document was produced or created. And it's also useful to include the version number. So I've typed those in B, B5, C5, and D5. I'm now going to select all of those cells. I'm going to bold them. I am then going to put a lightish gray background, slightly different to the header there, just to differentiate it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select column B, hold shift on my keyboard and go to column S. And I'm just going to go in between any two columns, left click and make the width of those columns larger. So I'm gonna make them, oh, I've clicked off by mistake. Let me just, if I press control Z, I'll go back, control Z again and I am going to hold shift on my keyboard and make sure they're all selected and then left click and let's make the width 17 and a half an hour. Yeah, that will do. Now what we're gonna do is then select B5 through to D6 and I'm gonna click on all borders. Now what this has essentially done is it's given us these content areas to include the information. So you'd be putting the project name in here, the date produced in here and the version in here. Now I'm gonna make row five, slightly larger, 21. I'm going to select B5 through to D5. I'm going to put them in the middle, so middle of the line on the home ribbon. And I'm also gonna increase the indent by one. So that looks great. So now we just need to create the table. Now you're probably thinking, what columns do you need to include? So essentially you want to cover what is happening, when it's happening, why it matters, who it impacts and how it will be communicated. So these are the columns that I recommend. The first will be event slash action, action slash strategy. Now in here, you're going to want to include the specific activity or milestone that triggers the communication, okay? I'll put them all in by the way, the columns and then and, and give you a reason why you want to include them and then we'll do the formatting at the end. Next, you're going to want to include the project phase. 
Label the project stage during which the communication will take place. This is really important. It's also useful from an audit perspective because it may be that the same communication needs to arise at the same stage of each project. You may be able to spot trends in that way. Also, you want to put in the predicted date of effect, or in other words, the time frame when the change will impact stakeholders. Next, you want to have somewhere to um, document the targeted stakeholders, or in other words, the individuals or groups who will need the information. Then a reason for the communication. Just you want to clarify the main purpose behind each update or announcement. Then the method of communication, and we can make this a drop down. I'll show you that later. Essentially, you want to identify how you will deliver the information. So will it be like an email? Will it be a physical meeting, a newsletter, etc.? Then the key message, what are you going to update the stakeholders with? Basically, the most important takeaway in a concise statement. Then you want the owner or the responsible individual. So yeah, a person or role who will create and send that communication. You then want to maybe put something about the frequency or the schedule. You know, is this going to be a one-off communication? Is it going to be an exact date that you plan to send the update, etc.? Then you need to have some kind of feedback mechanism, or in other words, explain how you'll gather responses and maybe questions. It could be surveys, it could be Q and A's. You just want to invite stakeholders to participate, and this will help with continuous improvement. And then it's also useful to have additional comments. Now, what this essentially does just gives you somewhere to capture extra details on notes that don't really fit into any of the other columns. So these are all the columns we want to include. Now, if you click on one of these that we created earlier, so let's go B5, then click Format Painter, left click here and go across from B8 through to L8. What that will have done is it will have middle aligned and it will have put in that indenting. So all we need to do now is hover over between eight and nine and increase that row height to about 28.5. And the other thing we can do while we're all, all selected, all, all of these columns are selected and rows, or just this row I should say, is on the home ribbon click wrap text and that will put it onto uh, a new line if it's too wide for the column width. So that is fantastic. Now, all we need to do is select B8 through to L, um, let's go down to L30 and just put all borders on. So here, so now we just created a table. Now if you click view and then remove the grid lines, you'll see how this looks fantastic without all of the, they are called grid lines kind of in place here. So we are really, really close to being finished. The only thing I'd recommend that you do now is just make this template even easier to fill out. So the way we can do that is by having some drop down options. And I'm gonna suggest that you do that really for the method of communication. You could on the others, so you could do it for a project phase, um, that could be one option as well, but let's just set it up for the method of communication for now. So what you'd basically want to do is create a new sheet at the bottom here, and we're gonna call this key. Now I'm gonna go back in here in that first tab. I'm going to select this, press Control C, go in here, Control V. Oh, I didn't like that for some reason, Control C. Now I'm using a, a PC, which is why I'm using those shortcuts. If you're using a Mac, it will be slightly different. Now the other thing I need to do is make this a lot shorter. It might have just been easier to create a new shape for now because that's going to be too long. Yeah, I'm actually going to delete that. Let's just quickly just create a new shape. Um, so insert pictures, no, sorry, shapes, rectangle. Let's do it to here. We only need it to be about this wide. So that's why I did that there. Right click, edit text, key, make this bigger. Again, might not be necessary. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just like to have that at the top of all my sheet so you know exactly what you're looking at. Put that in there like that. Just keep it a uniform approach. And then what we want to basically do is create the options, the list options. So the first one was going to be, uh, let's do actually let's do project phase as well. We might as well because I'll show you how it's set up. Project phase and also method of communication. Now if I go back in here, select that, format painter, go back into key, select these two, then that's already nicely done. Let's wrap these as well. And what we'll do is I'll just select these three columns and bring them out like this, make them a bit wider, those columns. Now for the project phase, we're going to have something like initiation, planning, 
execution, closure. Something as simple as that. You might want a monitoring phase as well. It obviously depends on what product project management methodology you're using. And I'll put board around this. And then method of communication, we just put in for now, just to show how it can be done. Face to face, you might even want to write that like that actually. Don't use acronyms. Um, meeting, it could be newsletter. It could be bulletin. It could be something like phone call, email, you get the idea. These have these for now, put all borders around, view grid lines removed. So we have this. Now, if you go back into the main tab, now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna select all of the cells in this table. I'm going to click on data, data validation, data validation. In the allow, we're gonna click this drop down. we're gonna click list, left click in source, and then left click in key. And then we're just going to select left click and drag down, we're gonna select all of that. So what this is basically saying is, look in the key tap sheet, look in the key sheet, and anything between B6 and B9, bring it through essentially into the list. Press okay. And now you'll see we have all these options. So as a template, this just makes life a lot easier for whoever's kind of submitting it or populating this template, I should say. So we've done that for project phase. The other way you can set this up, you'll notice the way I've set that up, it stops um, on all of the rows outside of where I set it up. So you'd, you'd need to essentially go in and create that data validation again if you're adding more rows to the table. So the other way to get around that, and I'll show you that for this option, is select the whole column. So let's just say column G, click data validation, data validation. In the allow, we're going to select, select list again. Source, left click, left click down here. This time we're bringing in these options. So C6 through to C11 press OK. Now what this has done is it's brought in the data validation for every single row in the sheet. But the problem with that is you'll also notice it's in here as well. And we don't want that. So to quickly remove that, I'm going to select GA all the way, well, G1 all the way through to G8. In the data ribbon at the top, click data validation, data validation, and then just change this to any value. Now what that's done is it's removed it from all of those we don't want it in, but anything under essentially well, G G9 and anything under, you're going to have that drop down option. So that's how to create a change management communication plan. All of the columns I would suggest that you include and what you're going to want to capture in each of the cells. Hope this video has been useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. As I say, if you want to pick this up, pick up this pre-built pre-formatted template, there's a link in the description down below. And with that said, over to you. Best of luck and I hope you have an excellent day.